Hello algebra students, this is Ms. Orr here and today I'm going to be walking you through the Algebra Unit 2 Lesson 20 practice problems. Uh, I'm not going to do all of them, just a few to kind of give you an overview of Lesson 20, what we did, and to help you with the exit ticket. So if you have your, um, your journal or your book from Argyle and you picked it up, you can go to Unit 2 Lesson 20 and look for the cumulative practice problems and you can follow along with me so you can have that in your book ready to go. So the whole focus for Lesson 20 was solving and writing inequalities. Um, so we're going to do some practice with just both of those things, okay? In the first equation or the first problem we see, it says solve 2x is less than 10 and explain how to find the solution set. I have a number that is multiplied by a variable, and so I want to do the opposite because my whole purpose is always to get that variable by itself. So I did the opposite, which is divide by 2, and I want to do that on both sides, both sides of the inequality. Um, so 2x divided by 2, you can write it as 1x, 2 divided by 2 is 1, or you can just leave the variable by itself. It's up to you, whichever you prefer. And then on the right side, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I have x is less than 5. How do I know this is correct? Well, I'm going to plug in a number. I know that 4 is less than 5, so I'm going to do 2 times 4. Should be less than 10. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 is less than 10, so I know I have this correct. Number 2, our famous Lynn is solving the inequality 15 minus x is less than 14. She knows the solution to the equation 15 minus x equal 14 is x equals 1. So Lynn decided to just take out the inequality and she put the equal sign. You will still solve this in the same way. In the end, she wants to know, is my answer going to be x is greater than 1 or x is less than 1? Okay, so she solved this out and she got x is equal to 1. And so to check this, I want to do this both ways. Is it going to be greater than 1 or less than 1? I know that a number greater than 1 is 2, so I'm going to plug in 2. 15 minus 2 should be less than 14. 13 is less than 14, so that works. X is greater than 1 works. But let's also look at X is less than 1. A number less than 1 is 0. 15 minus 0, um, is that less than 14? Well, 15 minus 0 is 15. 15 is not less than 14. So her answer, her final answer should be x is greater than 1. Okay, you can always do this to double check. If you want to change it to an equal sign, and then in the end, uh, choose both inequalities and check your answer to make sure you have it. Number three is similar to what you guys have for your exit ticket for this week. Uh, so this one is talking about a cell phone company. They have two texting plans. This is important when you get older, you want to compare. So plan A is going to just charge you 10 cents for each text. Plan B is going to charge you $12 per month. And then you pay an additional 2 cents for each text. So we're coming up with an inequality for letter A. We know that plan A, well, we want to say that plan A is cheaper than plan B. And we're going to use the letter X to represent, and that kind of got cut off, but the number of texts is going to be represented by the letter X. Um, it says 10 cents. 10 out of 100 is 0 0.10. So I changed that to a decimal. So plan A is simply 0 0.10 times X. And then we said that it's cheaper, so that means it's less than plan B. Plan B, I highlighted in blue, is $12. And then pay an additional. Additional means add the two cents uh, for each tax. So two cents times the tax. Okay, so that's our inequality. You are just looking at the word problem, underlining or highlighting the important information and taking that information and writing it into an inequality, which is what I did for plan A or for letter A. For letter B, you are actually going and solving it. So I put it together. 0.10x or 0.10x is less than 12 plus 0.02x. Remember, our whole purpose is to get the variable by itself. 
here I have the variable on both sides of the equation. So I subtracted 0.02x from the right and from the left. So now I have 10 minus 2 is 0.08x, um, and then 12 is by itself. Again, I want to get the variable by itself. So I'm going to divide by 0.08 from both sides. And I had to move over because I ran out of space. But I got the text is less than 150. X is less than 150. So as long as they send less than 150 text, then plan A will be cheaper. If they send 151 or 152, anything more than 150, then plan A is going to be more expensive. So as long as they send less than 150 text, it will be less. Some of you guys might as well go with plan B <laughs> because you probably send more than 150 texts um, in a month, okay? Question four. Now we're looking at error analysis. Claire made an error when she was solving this. Negative 4x plus 3 is less than 23. So you can see her work on the right. Uh, the first thing that she did is subtracted 3 from both sides. And then she got negative 4x is less than 20. The second thing she did was divided by negative 4. So she got x is less than negative 5. Here is where she made her mistake. She did not flip the sign. We talked about this in class. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, you want to make sure you flip the sign. And you can check your answer is correct by plugging in some values for the variable. So let's say that x was less than negative 5. Well, negative 6 is less than negative 5. So I plugged in negative 6. And I got um, negative 4 times negative 6. A negative times a negative is a positive. 24 plus 3. Well, 24 plus 3 is 27. 27 is not less than 23. So that proves right here it doesn't work. If I flip the sign, that means x is greater than negative 5. Well, a number that's greater than negative 5 is negative 4. So I plugged in negative 4 here in the red. Negative 4 times negative 4. A negative times a negative is a positive. If you hate to hate, you love. So 4 times 4 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19. 19 is less than 23. So now I know when I flip that equation around that my answer is now correct. So that is where Claire made her mistake. Let's just do one more. If you want to continue walking through these practice problems on your own, you can. But I'm just going to walk through number 5. Um, so this is talking about Diego. He wants to walk more than 70,000 steps this week. Um, so I label that with the greater than. More than means greater than. A week is seven days. The mean number of steps that Diego walked during the first four days of this week is 8,019. So he walked an average of 8,019 steps per day. So we're going to multiply those numbers together. Uh, so part A says write in an inequality that expresses the mean number of steps that Diego needs to walk during the last three days of his walk, um, of his week, to walk more than 70,000 steps. All right. So we have the first four days times 8,019 because he walked about 8,019 steps per day. He has to walk three more days. And we use the letter S to represent the number of steps. So we don't know the number of steps yet. But we do know he wants to walk more than 70,000 steps. So that is our inequality. I just took what we had from the paragraph and put it into an expression. Letter B is saying if he walks 12,642 steps over the next three days, each day over the next three days, will that be more? Um, it says that, but it's supposed to be than 70,000. So all I did was plug in 12,642 for the steps. So over the first four days, he walked about 32,076. If he does 12,642 um, each day for the next three days, that'll be 37,926. Excuse me. And when we add them up, it is just barely over, but it still works 70,002 steps. 
um, is greater than his seventy thousand uh, dollar. I keep saying dollar. His seventy thousand step goal. Okay. So that was the purpose of this lesson: looking at a word problem, writing an expression to go along with it, and solving it. Like I said, you can do the rest on your own if you want to. Um, but this should be able to help you with your exit ticket for this week. Thank you.